You know what's funny about old people is that the big gripe they have with young people is that you guys are so entitled, yada, yada, yada. No, you know who's entitled? It's you, you old fucks. Yeah. Who think that everyone should bow down and kowtow to your bullshit, saggy balls. But we don't care about you. You know why? Because you fucked up the economy, all mm. right? No one could buy a goddamn house. True. Fucking inflation's fucked up the ass. <laughs> and the only people that are fucking able to change anything in terms of legislation or bill writing is old fucking nuts like you. And we can't wait for you all to fucking die. Wow, you really took it really far. Bros and Hoes, you're listening to your favorite thing podcast with Wells and Brandy. So I was on a flight today, a good old Southwest flight, and it was Liddy for the eclipse. Oh, Um, yeah. They were passing out glasses, you know, for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I flew from Austin, which Austin was like, it was on the edge of the path, but it was on the path of totality. Yeah. Um, but I left my flight, took off before it started in Austin, and it landed in Nashville after it was ended. So truly, like, I flew alongside the eclipse, per se. Um, the, unfortunately, when you're in a little tin can, mm-hmm, the sun mm-hmm. is above you. Uh, so even so though no I had totality. a window seat. I mm. couldn't see it. Did you see it get darker? It got darker. Again? It got a little weird out. Yeah. 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 It wasn't wasn't ideal. But honestly, like I was thinking the night before, I was like, do I push the flight to watch this thing? And then I woke up and I was like, nah, I got to go nah. home. I got to nah. go home. <laughs> Here's the thing that like it's it's kind of like going to the Super Bowl. It's like once you've done it, you're like, I, I don't need to do this again. And when I saw Totality in 2017 on a rooftop bar in Nashville, mm-hmm. it was very cool. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. I don't know if I need to do it again. One and you done. Know? I did it. Yeah. What are we doing here? It's fine. Um, also, I was seeing a lot of my TikTok. It was like, are you kidding me? We got uh, earthquakes in New York. We got a uh, total eclipse happening over the United States. The NASA sending up rockets. Uh, CERN hydron collider starting again. The world's about to end. Guess what? Nothing happened. Nah, we're good. Dude, I'm so tired of the, like, constant fear-mongering on social media that the world is ending. Because then I get excited. It's like, maybe it's going to happen. Oh, you're excited you know? about that? I think it would be fun to be, hey, listen, you're go- everyone's going to die. True. You know? Mm-hmm. Even JC. Yeah. I mean, he, man, he only yeah. got to come back. He only got to come back for three days. He got to go back up, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> so if you got to die, mm-hmm. kind of cool to be the last ones, you know? I don't think I need to do that. Well, I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, you want your, your death to be epic. Do you? It'd be kind of funny, though. I was you thinking could, a nice, peaceful, like, die in my sleep situation would be good. Yeah, I know. Nice and peaceful. <sighs> Yeah, but well, that's just like coward's way out, you know? I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, we're, it's no matter what's going to happen, it's going to happen. Look, she muted her microphone because she's chewing ice. She's crunching some ice there. What a pro. Yeah. Any hoot, Branzino. Um, I think I like this nickname, but we'll roll with it. It's pretty good. We'll roll with it. It's pretty good. Mm. I, like I got asked on the red carpet last night if I had a nickname. And if I had and? known that you well, brand I, come... the brand I didn't think about that one. So you said no. Oh no! I said I got a nickname. What is it? Uh, I think you know this. Okay. My sister, yeah. for some reason, calls me DJ Ditha. 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 Why isn't that your DJ name? Uh, I think that's pretty obvious. Why that's not my DJ name? Yeah. Um, but that's what she puts on. Like when she sends me a package, it'll say DJ Diza. I love it. It's, I don't know if I love it, but it's, that's my nickname and it has stuck. And here we are. Here we are. Mm. Well, why have tears? Welcome into another episode featuring DJ Diza, the brand Zeno, the brand I, and, and, your, fearless, and, and your fearless leader, Adam Wells, <laughs> the bubs. Um, should we start the show? Mm-hmm. 301. You, I think it's me. Yeah. I think you did I think you did three hundo. I did. Bros and hoes, you're listening to a totality event <laughs> <laughs> podcast with 
<laughs> Wells and Brandy. <laughs> Adam it, Wells it already happened. And... Doesn't matter. It's happening to me now, and okay. I have to live in the moment, okay? okay? I want to start the show with a little bit of positive reinforcement. Okay. Saw so this on TikTok. Loved it. Girl was talking about how she was a a um a coffee maker. What is that called? A barista. A barista. She was like, "Yeah, I worked at you know whatever um, some coffee shop." And this guy came in and asked me how I was doing. And she and she goes, "I responded with the you know living the dream, which we all do, right? We mm-hmm. all do." And then she said, "The guy said something that was so interesting. He said, well, hey man, if you can't get out of it, get into it." And I like that piece of advice. Okay. You know. Sure. Like if you got if you got to go run some errands, mm-hmm. get into it, dude. Let's yeah. put on a book on tape or maybe an episode of YFT that you haven't listened to yet. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. if your if your flight gets canceled, let's get into it. Let's go get a drink. You let's know, let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> so, anyways, let's let's take that energy into um, post totality. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, I went to quite the event the other night. Where'd you go? We went to the Disney plus Hulu merger party oh, or something. Fancy. And it was, uh, at Mother Wolf, which is, if you live in LA, you know, it's a very tasty Italian restaurant. It is. And I was lured there under false pretenses of being able to sit down and enjoy a nice big old plate of tagliatelle. Mm. No, no, it was hopping and elbow rubbing and all that stuff you got to do in in well, in any industry, but also in Hollywood. But you know what I did? I said, if I can't get out of it, let's get into it. So uh, it was actually really cool. Uh, Bob Iger spoke. He's the head of Disney. And I got to see him. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, we saw all the other big heads of things. And then we saw like our old friends, like the entire cast of Modern Family was there. So that was really fun. Uh, Ty Burrell was there and Ed O'Neill and Jesse Ferguson. That was very cool. And then who do I see but Jerry and Teresa. Oh, cute. They're there and they are like looking around being like, where the fuck are we? You know, you know, you get thrown into one of those, uh, those uh, rooms with a lot of names and you're just like, Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So I sheltered them like little, um, like little baby fawns and I showed them the ways. And then later, um, Joey and Kelsey showed up. Cute. And then we just fucking partied with them. We went hard in the paint. Did you really? We went, yeah, so when we went to we went to a rooftop bar where like I was, I was like they were handing out um, Negronis to everybody. Oh, so I a got Negroni, a Negroni, stunning with prosecco in it. Yeah, um, so I got really drunk and then I kind of sobered up because we went to this rooftop bar and I got like some chips and salsa and it was better. And then and then we went to a hotel room, and who was there? Lo and behold, but um. Charity and Dotton. Okay, cool. So a we'll bachelor party. And it was like the whole bachelor niche. And um and then we went to hide. Shoot me in the head. Why'd you do that? They all got a table with the fucking bar service. And uh. um yeah. Okay. So I like made everyone a drink as good as I could mm-hmm. with Bottle you can't service. really make good drinks with bottle service. Absolutely you know? not. It's such bullshit. It's the biggest waste of money. For sure. Anyway, so I, I did the... <laughs> and Sarah and I were both looked at each other and we're like, Taco Bell? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know what we did? You know what we did? We said, let's get out of it mm-hmm. and then go get into it mm-hmm. with the Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it was cool um, hanging out with all them and... Uh, also, Zach and Katie were there. Okay. They're so sweet. They're very cute. They seem very normal. They're too normal. I like you know? No, I like it. You do? Yeah. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Anyways, everyone seemed to be very happy, and it was nice to see everybody, and I had a great time. Love it. Love that for y'all. I want to go ahead and just apologize profusely for the live that we did, which oh, was just- Oh, I thought it was great. It was just- 
controlled. It was uncontrolled chaos. I think it. I think they loved it. You do? Yeah. It was terrible. No, it was I'm great. Sorry. We did great, okay. sweetie. Don't worry. I just like I hold myself to a higher standards. Nah. And that thing was that thing was I couldn't kick, I couldn't kick people out. I was right that up my girl, alley. That one girl Heather was just stuck. She couldn't get out. We you made know? Heather's day. Okay, I'm just cool with it. Yeah, no. Yeah. Do you do you wash your hands when you go pee? Yeah. Like after you go pee, you do. Yeah. Like even in your own bathroom. I, uh, yeah. You do. I do. I mean, Why I do you guess, not? Well, I guess it's. I saw this interview with um, Rain Wilson, uh, Dwight Schrute. Okay. And he's like, I don't, why am I washing my hands after I go pee? Like, Well, don't you guys like have to like hold it, aim it? Yeah. Well, but I've taken a shower that day. My my wiener, <laughs> it's not like my wiener's like growing bacteria on it, you Maybe know? Maybe it is. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, like I've cleaned it that day. It might be a little sweaty, but like... Anyways, yeah, exactly. also, that's nasty if it's sweaty. Okay, well, I don't wash my hands every time my hands get a little clammy, you know? Maybe you should. Okay, maybe we're, we're like, if I'm working out, I'm not and I'm like, if I wipe off my brow and I'm like, oh, God, everyone, stop. I got to go wash my hands. I got sweat from my brow. Anyways, hmm. I was thinking about it because I do wash my hands after I pee. And then he made a good point, and I, and, I, and I liked it. He said, hey, listen, you know, I've taken a shower today. I'm touching a penis that has been washed and then what's coming out of me is sterile urine mm -hmm. so like whatever mm -hmm. and then i zip up and i you know i flush or whatever why don't you wash me what did i touch that was gonna get me sick no obviously if you take a poo poo you need to wash your hands because you can get poop, you can get poop articles on your hands you yeah, know you've gotten pink eye once or twice <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm not sure we should listen to you on hygiene <laughs> To be honest. Well, I, I, everyone's got big eye. <laughs> and I blame the dog. I don't recall the last time I had pink eye, which means I was probably a small child if if I've ever had it. I think I had it twice. <laughs> Here's when I, there's sometimes that I don't wash my hands and that's if I'm like out, usually in, it's airports that have the grossest bathrooms. And if yeah. I feel like I'm going to get more germs on me touching all mm. the shit everybody else has touched at the sink, yeah. sometimes I'll get on out of there and just use a little hand wipe, you know? Yeah. I do like the, the dispensers outside the door because I feel like I do all this stuff like an airport or like even like a gas station bathroom. Like, mm -hmm. yes, I've cleaned my hands. And then the, the, the second I open the door, yes. more poo particles are back on my hand. Yes. I'm now back at stage zero. Yeah. I need the, the dispenser right outside there. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, but yeah, like, I don't think I need to, pee like, like when you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you're like, I got to wash my hands. I don't go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Oh, well, it must be nice that your prostate works so great. It does. But over here in 40 guy, 40 year old land. <laughs> you pee a lot? I'm peeing more. I will say that. Interesting. It, that is, that is, ha I'm, I'm going to the bathroom in the middle of the night more than I used to. But here's the other thing though, Brandy. I feel like I've become so much more um, in the past, let's say, five years. I've become so much more neurotic about my hydrations. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I'm always got look. I've always got this I'm just, with me. I got some water. I always have my my Yeti full of water. Uh, growing up, I was never hydrated. Me neither. You know? Yeah, I lived on Dr. Pepper and Surge. Yeah. And and my urine was dark brown. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> oh. Uh, I don't like that. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Anyways. Hmm. Um, you got some big things, bro, or what's going on? Bro, you know I haven't watched shit. I know. Let me tell you what happened to me this weekend. Okay. I'm usually just such a great packer. You know, mm -hmm. but this was a big weekend. I was in, I did three, well, did I go three places or two? I guess three technically counting Nashville. And I had to pack for all these things. And I forgot my motherfucking AirPods like a freaking amateur. So I couldn't watch anything. 
that's when you have to go and you have to buy the forty dollar no. AirPods that are trash I, garbage. I didn't do that, and I have the new I phone, and none of the like plug in headphones I found worked, and it was a tragedy. So I, did, I wasn't able to watch anything, and I actually I feel like I need to vent a little bit about my airport travels. My you got the new phone, huh? I got the new phone. Yeah, I'm still living in eleven Pro land. How does your phone even still work? Mine stops functioning every time they come out with a new one. No fucking clue, but I'm riding that bitch until the wheels fall off. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Go um, for it. Well, I had not one, but two people just be so fucking rude to me at mm. airports this weekend. Karen's. And the first one was uh, they, they were both men. Imagine that. Oh. Um. And the first Chads. one. Yeah, the first one I was sitting in the Miami airport waiting for my flight to Austin on Saturday and uh, didn't have AirPods, you know. So I, I went and, and found like a quieter air, like a, an area with less people to go sit so I could FaceTime my mother because you know what? Her husband's dad isn't doing well and I needed to check in mm. with my mom to see how she was doing. Um, and so I FaceTimed her and she was, we were just talking about things and you know how everybody is. And um, all of a sudden I, there's someone from behind me says, not everyone wants to hear your fucking phone conversation. Wow. Literally just like that. And I, it was so loud, well, like right in my ear. He, he was sitting right behind me, I guess. And I literally, I was in such shock. I turned around and I said, uh, there's plenty of seats over there. Nice. <laughs> if you don't want to hear me. And he was like, God, you just, you can't talk to somebody without seeing their face. And I was like, no, um, no, my mom's uh, husband's dad is dying, and I would like to talk to her face because it's 2024, and I was here. Did first. you say that? Yeah, did I you did. make him feel bad? Yeah, nice. I tried to, and he was just such a dick. He was such a piece of shit. And there was like a woman and her daughter kind of sitting, um, like close enough to hear him. And when he walked away, they were like, "We, we were gonna take him with you." There, she was like, "What a piece of shit!" And I was like, oh, "I know," mm. and I was like, "A fucking man, imagine that." So he was the first one, just made a complete scene in the Miami airport, mm. uh, and then today. In the Austin airport, I went and it was very crowded. And normally I like to go like stand away from people, you know. Um, but I went to sit down for a second. You know, I was feeling a little, feeling a little hungover today. Went and sat down and there was like a girl sitting to my right in the seat. And then like two seats next to me had like a bunch of stuff in it, like bags, but no people. And you know, when you go sit in the row of seats, you like take your carry on and you usually like park it right by you and you sit, you plop down, you know. So I'm like on my phone, just like checking out CMT content. And all of a sudden I hear, um, could you move your bag so I could sit down? And I was, I looked up and I said, of course, you know, of course, no problem. I was like, you know, you could have been a little nicer about it. And I like, yeah. moved my bag over and he was like, oh, kids these days. Wow. He went with the kids went, these days? He went with the kids these days. Wow. I was like, my God. Why, why are all the men so angry? <sighs> Because they're missing totality, probably. I just don't get why people, how people can be rude to strangers for no reason. Like, I just, it's very beyond me, but. I Listen, how old were these people? Old. Yeah. 50, there it is. But old, like 50s there for it is. sure. There it is. You know what's funny about old people is that they, the, the big gripe they have with young people is that you guys are so entitled, yada, yada, yada. No, you know who's entitled? It's you, you old fucks. Yeah. Who think that everyone should bow down and kowtow to your bullshit, saggy balls. But we don't care about you. You know why? Because you fucked up the economy, all mm. right? No one could buy a goddamn house. True. Fucking inflation's fucked up the ass. <laughs> and the only people who are fucking able to change anything in terms of legislation or bill writing is old fucking nuts like you. And we can't wait for you all to fucking die. You won't, you know what? <laughs> you really took it really far. Yeah. You know what you're entitled to? You're entitled to go fucking die in Del Boca Vista and sell off your property to a bunch of millennials and zennials who can't afford shit. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. But anyways, mm -hmm. my thing, my, my thing, I, I get really frustrated. Uh, I think I've told this story before, but I was playing golf. We were in like this big golf tournament. It was like all my buddies. And so we had like six groups of like golf tee times in a row because we were all playing together as a tournament. And these old fucks come in. They're like, we're we're going off at 1230. And we're like, no, you're not. We're like from 11 to 1250. 
So no. And they're like, yes, we are. This is unacceptable. And we were like, I, we're at golf tournament. Like there's no way that you're supposed to be in the middle of this, you know, Mm -hmm. like there's in no world did a pro shop think, you know what we should do? We should send these fucking old fucks in the middle of this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they, so they bitched and moaned forever. And finally I go, okay, you guys can go. I don't really care, but I do want to know one thing to all the fucking guys. I go, when am I old enough that I can be a fucking mean old piece of shit too? Because I'm almost 40 years old and I got to listen to this shit. That's fucking ridiculous. This is an episode that I did not envision <laughs> happening. <laughs> okay. We are going to, I got really heated. You, you really did. I thought I it was to, my time to bitch, but you really just took yeah, over there. No. Yeah. Hey, if, can't get out of it. Get into it. You know? get out of it. <laughs> get out of it. You know what I was thinking about the other day? What? Are they called fairy tales because they're tales about fairies? Maybe. I thought I thought that that was pretty interesting. Why are you, th- why are you thinking about that? <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I, I like the etymology of all things, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm a deep thinker. Uh-huh. Maybe I was drunk. I don't know. Got it. But I was like, why are they called fairy tales? And I'm like, oh, they're probably because they're books and stories about fairies. They are. Some of them. You know, but like, like, you know, there's also troll. There should be troll tales. There should be elven tales. What are you looking at over the there? The dogs are up to no good. I'll tell you that ah, right the fuck now. Got it. You guys, they're not really allowed in this room. Little dog, move off. Go on. They're not really allowed in here. You know, something that really, you know something that really grinds my gears? What's that? Uh, I don't know if this is like showing up on your uh, For You page. I think I just need to leave TikTok, to be honest with you. But <laughs> Maybe it gives that'd me, be good. I know. Take a break. It, it does give me a lot of good material. So I don't know if it's if it's worth it or not. But okay. um, I for whatever reason on my For You page, I'm getting a lot of like, it's squatters and like the owners of the house can't get them out. That's terrifying. And... Why do we allow that? I, like, don't I don't know. I have never understood why if I bought a house. No, I know. And I have to pay the mortgage. No, I know. And you're living there. Here, why do you have any fucking rights? Here's dude? what I don't understand is. OK, like, let's say, you know, because everyone's always like, oh, if there's an abandoned house. Like, if you have a house that's sitting empty, you got to check, make sure there's no like squatters, because then if they get in there, they don't have to leave. Yeah. What about no trespassing? What about people that get arrested for trespassing? What's the fucking difference? Yeah, I don't understand. If, I, if I'm like, I call the police. Hey, guys, there are some people that are just living in my house. Can you get, come get them out? Yeah. Listen, we got to go by different. There's rules no, I and know. regulation. You're like, what are you talking about? It doesn't make any sense. Also, like, what's the point of a fucking contract lease if yeah. it doesn't matter and they can just squat? Like, I just don't understand any of it. I know. And like when I watch these videos, I want to be like, dude. Per, grab that person by their arm, pull them out of the house. Yeah. Have the locksmith there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what are we doing? To get out of this book. Either pay me or get the fuck out. Anyways, no, it doesn't I, make any sense. Why is that like, listen, I'm a pretty progressive person. And maybe I'm starting to sound like a little bit of a like a Republican over here. Well, <laughs> but, but what would we do? Like the fact that like someone was like, we gotta they gotta have rights. No. They don't. You, but they like they what? No, yeah, I feel no. terrible for those people. I feel terrible for people who own the house. I know. It's it's God. very strange. Yeah. Speaking of TikTok, mm. at the CMTs, yeah, a Montana boy bought me a drink. Like a fan of Hannah Montana? <laughs> no, a Montana boy. Oh, you know the Montana boys? No, I don't. Yes, Is that you a band? do. Is They're on band? TikTok. Well, one of them's dating Kirsten Cavallari. Oh, now that's annoying to me. But uh, mm-hmm. so are we? Some pretty big times. What I'm trying to say. Which one? Which I was it? Kirsten Cavallari's one? No, no, another one. And it's a funny. I thought there were like six of them. Mm. There's only three. Got it. Yeah, I guess they just keep rotating. You know, I just really thought there were so many of them, and yeah. they go and you know you don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? Uh, is they a, is it a band? No, it's these guys, the Montana boys, and they are on TikTok and they just sing this one Luke Combs song. 
over and over and over. And they get in a single file line and they like one of them sings a line, goes to the back of the line. The other one sings the next line, goes to the back of the line. And I just thought there were like six or seven Montana boys because I just kept seeing them just get, mm. turns out there's only three and they just keep keep going to the back of the line and just keep keep rotating. Why are you excited about this? These guys don't seem like they do anything cool. <laughs> they don't. I don't know. <laughs> I just, you know. Why is Kristen Cavallari dating one of them? I don't know. I just assumed he was a country singer. I don't think so. He's just a guy who does, makes TikToks? I think so. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm really in with the TikTok royalty these days. I, I got to meet Dasha also. She's cool as shit. And um, we're homies. And she's going to come on Sorry We're Stoned. And she's going to be at Stagecoach. And, and she's my new bestie. So. Who's that? Dasha, the girl that does the Austin song and the line dance that's literally like the biggest thing on TikTok right now. You know, for someone that's like on TikTok, you really yeah. don't know the trends. No, I'm on I'm on squatters rights. It's very TikTok. disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say this. I made a TikTok the other day and I because I, I started to get a little frustrated because it's like a lot of my stuff is negative. And it was mm. first it was just like ripping on JLo for like really not being from the block, mm. which is kind of funny because like, listen, she's a zillionaire and like. Like whatever, and she spent all like twenty million dollars on this on this movie that was terrible. I will say that we watched seven minutes of it and then we turned it off. Um, and then it was a lot of people making fun of JoJo Siwa for her like rebrand and everything. And I went on this whole rant of like, it just seems like what is popular now is ripping on other people for making art. Like, and and I think that that's like frustrating. I don't like that. You know, it's like, and it, and, it, and what's weird is that like, because the, now they're called like creators, you know, and so like, so now the irony of it all is that your art, because you're a creator, is just cutting down other people's art. Anyways, I just think the world's, they keep telling me the world's ending, but it's not. And it'd be so much cooler if it was. No, I don't think so. Anyways, I went on the I went on the good fight to like fight for for artists, mm. but I was really hungover, and then I was like, "Ugh, this is." Hmm. Do you know Ugh. about Do you know about Pookie on TikTok? No, she was oh, oh, she was oh, also yes. there. These people are not fucking. Good. Pookie's just a rich chick with a rich husband, and she just shows her outfit, and yep. then the husband's like, "And Pookie's wearing this, and yep. blah blah blah." Yep. Which, by the way, people rip on that motherfucker, but you know what? He is. He's a like I, I need someone pump me up like that, yeah. you know. <laughs> he's doing the Lord's work. He is, and he walked the red carpet, so I think he's doing great. This is fucked up. I'm just telling you, Pookie. Pookie, yeah, she was there. Um. Well, speaking of like real celebrities, <clears throat> I uh, <laughs> I I finally watched Oppenheimer. Oh, I still haven't seen it. Yeah. I gotta. Um. Why don't you seem excited about it? Yeah, you know. <gasps> listen, You're the only person that's had that reaction. Yeah. Huh. Uh, hmm. The story of an American scientist, J. Robert Oppenheimer, and his role in the development of the atomic bomb. Literally everyone's in this fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> Cillian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Killian. Matt Damon, Killian Murphy... Robert Downey Jr., Jason Clark, Tony Goldwyn, Kenneth Branagh. Like, we could go on for a while here. Um, listen, it is great. Um, but? Well, you know, I kind of wanted the story really to just be about, like, how they did it. Like, and how cool that is, is that, like, f f physicists were able to figure this out and, like, all that. And then a lot of it's like, are you a communist? It was like a, a lot of it's like him at like being like, like basically like going to trial about like whether or not he's a communist and like what blah, blah, blah. his brother's a communist and he had a sex with a communist. Everyone's a fucking communist. He made the fucking bomb that started the that stopped the war. Can we leave him alone? It's a good movie though. <laughs> you're so nuts but uh when we did when we did live the other day 
I was talking about my new favorite thing, Mm -hmm. which is a show called Resident Alien. Oh. And when I tell you this is one of the better shows I've watched in a very long time, this not hyperbole. All right, guys. It it is so very fun and funny. Better than Three Body Problem? Well, Three Body Problem's serious. Like a drama. This is just a comedy. A crash-landed alien takes on the identity of a small-town Colorado doctor and slowly begins to wrestle with the mortal dilemma of his secret mission on Earth, Resident Alien. It's on uh, Sci-Fi and then also Peacock. Um, The main guy is uh, Alan uh, Tadike? Tadike? Sadiq, I know him from um, from Firefly. I really like that show. Um, but he's in like Rogue One. He's in iRobot. He's in A Knight's Tale. I feel like that might be something that you would know him from. I loved that movie. Yeah. <clears throat> he's like kind of like the page or whatever, you know, like he's like the sidekick. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so he's the alien and he... Like, he's having a hard time just kind of, like, adapting to being a human because it takes on, like, the body of this doctor. Um, But there's, like, one kid in town that, like, can see him for what he really is. And that's just a lot of him trying to kill this child, which is hilarious. And there's, like, a bartender that wants to fuck him, but, like, he doesn't know what's going on. And uh, it is so fun. Go watch Resident. It's so good. It's sci-fi. It's comedy, and it's a murder mystery too. It opens up with a murder mystery because um, the doctor in town it gets murdered, and so then he has to replace the doctor. Anyways, it's got a little bit of everything. Okay, a little bit of everything. Um, I'm just gonna keep going here because I feel like you got nothing, and uh, nothing. Unless you want more CMT gossip and TikTok. Stories. Mm. I, that's all I got. I mean, like you got something good, you know. I think you have some good shit, but I can't say any of it. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it about? Can't say. We watched a pretty crazy Korean show called Parasite. Um. Wait, like the movie that came out a couple years no, ago? No, it's spelled different. Oh. It's spelled P A R A S Y T E, um, okay. and then. Parasite the Grey. Hmm. A group of humans humans wage war against the rising evil of unidentified parasitic life forms that live off human hosts and strive and strive to grow their power. Parasite the Grey. It's a show. So basically like it opens up like at a festival and like these like weird blobs fall on the ground and these like little worms come out and then you see these like little worms go and like enter in people's ears and stuff and then the and then the parasite can control the person um and it's pretty crazy like pretty pretty crazy graphics like when the parasite wants to kill somebody like the head kind of opens up almost like the demogorgon you know oh i don't like that yeah i didn't like that part of uh stranger things then you're this is not for you no 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 uh but then like this part part, part pe- the but the, but, the, but, the, but, the, but the head like splits open and then they can use it as weapons and stuff. It's pretty crazy. And then this one girl gets uh gets like the parasite in her, but like the parasite is kind of like helping her and like trying to save her and the um, humans. Mm. And uh and then uh, then the government gets involved and they and they catch one of the parasites and they put this like big helmet over it so it can't do that crazy thing and then they use it as kind of like a beacon to find the other paradise anyways very fun very gross very gory uh annoying because it is dubbed because it's korean Oof, yeah. but the koreans are making some good shit you know they are so they are i liked it okay yeah cute cute yeah cute. yeah cute. Um, and the book I'm reading, boy, oh boy, do you need to read this book? Which one? Um, The Kind Worth Killing. It's, it's very gone girly to me. Okay. Um, like that. A devious tale of psychological suspense, perfect for fans of 
Paula Hawkins, the girl on the train, and is soon to be a major movie directed by someone's name that I cannot pronounce. In a tantalizing setup, reminiscent of Patricia Highsmith's classic Strangers on a Train, on a night flight from London to Boston, Ted Severson meets the stunning and mysterious Lily Kittner. Sharing one too many martinis, the strangers begin to play a game of truth, revealing very intimate details about themselves. Ted talks about his marriage that's going stale and his wife Miranda, who he's sure is cheating on him. Ted and his wife were a mismatch from the start. He's the rich businessman. She's the artistic free spirit. In a contrast that once inflamed their passion, but now has clung, become cliché, Ted and Lily devise a plan to kill Miranda. The Kind Worth Killing. A novel by Peter Swanson. Um, really fun. Good twist, too. Oh. And the twist comes in the middle, which I like. Oh. I'm a fan of twists coming in the middle. Okay. Uh, but I think you, you like it. I really Sounds do. Sounds good. Sounds like a very Brandi book. It does. And I think a lot of the YFTers will enjoy it as well. And then when I okay. mentioned it on the live, a bunch of people were like, I love that book. So, but you got to finish. Um, I know. I know. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Tomorrow and tomorrow. And tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. In my there's, free time. There's another one. There's a documentary out uh, called Homicide New York. It's on Netflix. And if you're into... Um, homicides and documentaries and people get murdered for uh weird reasons check it out the first episode's pretty pretty i can't say fun because this is real life um is interesting because it's like this girl who like works in like the in like the theater world in new york but then also like sells weed on the side um she gets murdered with like a bunch of friends that are in the room and then a bunch of friends get murdered too um and like one lives, even gets shot in the head. So it's like stuff like that. And yeah. Homicide, New okay. York on Netflix. Uh, have you not watched uh, the new Hulu series that's out? It's like a world, another World War II story that was a novel first. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, I forget the name of it. Can you look it up? All Quiet in the Western Front? No. What is it called? I don't know. I need you to Google it. What, you want me to Google Hulu? See, new Hulu or, series. War series. New Hulu. I bet it comes up. We were the lucky ones. That Shogun. One. We were the lucky ones. Well, I have heard Shogun's great. Oh, I haven't even heard of that. Uh, we. Okay. Oh, Joey King's in this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I looked, I watched the the uh, trailer for this. You haven't started it. <clears throat> No, Joey King and uh, Logan Lerman. Yeah, I, I really want to start that one. That's been like next it's on my list. So funny. You and Sarah are the exact same. You watched that freaking Masters of the Air thing. Oh, loved. And then all of a sudden you're like, I got to get into all the war movies. Well, they're just all coming out. Not really. I mean, like she went and watched like Band of Brothers, which I watched, you know, whatever oh, it was, 10 years ago. I saw that back in the day. Well, I also loved um, the series that came out not that long ago. Um, all the light we cannot see. Yeah, great book. Also a book. Yeah. yeah, this one. This one was a book though. So we we were the lucky ones. Mm -hmm. A Jewish family is determined to survive and reunite after being separated in World War II. Um, yeah, that's gonna be pretty good. I'm sure. Mm, I think so. And also sad. I know. I like sad. <laughs> Something's wrong with me. I know. Big, I, big fan of the Holocaust over there, sister. I mean, I just like sad movies in general. Yeah. But yet you don't cry. Don't cry. What an interesting dynamic, you know? Maybe you like sad stories because it makes you feel alive. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't either. Um, my last thing. Okay. I'm pretty sure tattoo removal is a scam. And no one wants to talk about it. <laughs> I'll agree with that. <clears throat> I feel I feel like I've never seen anybody have a successful tattoo removal. It hurts so motherfucking bad. I can't even explain to you. And it's like crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. Hurts so much more than getting the actual tattoo. So much worse. And then all it just looks like it's like a big blob after a while. 
It's like a good. bruise. It looks worse than that. It's it just looks terrible. I know. Yeah. I just I don't believe in it. And I don't mm. think you should either. Why have tears? I think that in this day and age, there should be a more advanced way to do this. Like, how have we not figured out a better way to remove tattoos in 2024? But you know the what I mean? thing about tattoos is... They're permanent. I get it. That's the point of it. I get it. So you make the life decision. So I don't okay, have any yeah, tattoos. Well, so are vasectomies, and those are reversible. <laughs> you, well... You really had to think about that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess that's a good example. But I think that, okay, I, <laughs> I don't think that people would get them if they knew they weren't re reversible. Well, I feel like a lot of people don't realize they are reversible. Well, I feel like they do. Any, any man who's going to get a uh, really it knows vasectomy it's knows what the what the costs are. Are they all reversible or is there a chance it can't, it, it isn't? There's always a chance. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what but, I thought. But anyways, you go into a tattoo knowing you can't get it off. Well, you no, you tattoo removal. You there's always a chance. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's a sham. Uh huh. Don't believe the hype, everybody. It doesn't mm -hmm. exist. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. I've never. I want to see one person be like, I had a tattoo here, and I'll be like, I can't see it. That's never happened in the history of my life. I wonder if it's because is it because it doesn't work or is it because it takes so many sessions and it hurts so fucking bad that nobody can make it to the end? I think it's the latter. But I uh, whatever. Yeah. It's so expensive too. That's what really grinds my gears. Mhm. Mm yeah. Anywho, <laughs> that's all I got. Did the wife tears have any calls? Do they have any favorite things? No. Oh, they cool, didn't. cool, cool, cool. No, Great. no, 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 no. Um, All right, well. Yeah. Hmm. So I really need you to kind of start pulling your weight over here. I will do my best, but I am only home for two days. And then, God, please let me remember my fucking AirPods on Thursday when I get on a flight to L.A. How could you forget those? I don't know. They were sitting right here on the charger, and I just had a lot going on. All right. This one from Courtney... Underscore S11, five stars, thank you. Uh, five stars, thank you for that. Subject line, uh, thank you very much. Uh, love y'all so much. Thank you. I look forward to listening to y'all every week on my way to work. So here's the thing. Brandy, please let Wells end the episode with the joke because I do, in fact, crack up at them. Thank you! Also, Wells, bring back Dirty Grandpa. Uh, love you. Bye. You did this on purpose. I did. You think I'm Courtney S11? No, but you teed it up with, I think we've got to bring back Dirty Grandpa. And then it just so happens that YFT -er left Fuck You Very Much requesting Dirty Grandpa. Seems too good to be true to me. I, I don't, I don't care either way. I think Dirty, I think Dirty Grandpa was funny. We'll say that. Um, all right, here, this one coming from Easily Amused Skater. Five stars, thanks for that. Subject line, fuck you very much. So as my husband and I sat there on Sunday debating what to watch after putting our lovely toddlers to bed, after thoroughly enjoying Ricky's to Nikki the night before, uh, okay, I turned to one of my favorite resources, the YFT website, only to discover it hasn't been updated since the January 31st episode. How am I supposed to... Rem Remember all of Wells's and Brandy's favorite things. Come on. But in all seriousness, I love the pod. Longtime listener. And I look forward to every Wednesday or Friday if it's or Fridays for a bit there every week. Okay. Easily amused skater. I did not know that that was happening. But the producers are going to get a ribbon from me, sister. That's unacceptable. <laughs> okay. This one comes from J 18 Five stars. Thanks for that. This is a uh, subject line. Fuck you very much. Uh, love you so much, Wells and Brandy. Wells, can you please follow up on what you thought of the traders? Specifically, what did you think of your challenge competitors? Also, have either of you seen the Dune movies? I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. I have not watched the Dune movies. We actually Me talked about either. it last night. And we're like, should we do this? I would like to see them, I think. I guess, but I guess. it just I do, seems I mean, like... They sound like something we would like. 
It does. I watched the first one and I was just like, this is beautiful, but it's just like a long. Yeah, it's a long. Sand monsters. And, oh, oh, God, there's no water. Um, okay, but good question about the Traders. I did finish the Traders season two and I really did like it. Um, I have a lot of thoughts, actually. I think that Peter played a really, really good game. Pilot Pete, have you seen that season? No. You should go watch it. It's like, it's a really, it's a fun show. Uh, Pilot Pete is super smart. And like, really? he devises this plan. So the whole, if you play. know it based on his bachelor season. He made some bad decisions on the show. <laughs> he did slam Hannah Ann three times in a windmill though. So, you know, the guy's got some game. Um, but do you, have you ever played werewolf or mafia? Oh, I used to be very good at it. Okay. So that's what traders is. Yeah. So there's traders and there's faithful. So there's mafia and there's townsfolk or what? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever you play. Mafia. And so, yeah. So everyone's trying to figure out who's the mafia, who's the traders. Right. Mm -hmm. And so pilot Pete, like, he's like, I'm a faithful, uh, so he he devises these plans to like out who the traders are, and one of them is like if you go do one of these challenges and you win like immunity, mm -hmm. uh, like they, the trader can't kill you that night. And so what Pilot Pete was like, okay, let's say that I got the immunity, but really we're going to give it to Bergy, and if they all think that I got it, uh, that they're going to try to kill Bergy, and if they try to kill Bergy, we know who it's who it is, and like totally catches them. Like wow. Uh, like these, some of these traders are like, ah, come on, you guys got to be a little bit smarter than this, you know? Uh -huh. um, but anyways, he, they they end up killing him because I think he was a little, he played a little too hard. Um, Because that game also is a lot of politics, you know? And mm -hmm. you got to really, you got to work the crowd a little bit and stuff. But he did a good job. I thought, uh, I thought it really helped probably his like, brand if you can call it that but you know like you're right like he did look bad kind of post bachelor and stuff and i think this helped but i gotta say like no surprise that ct and trichelle won this thing like they are challenge champions like they do this shit on the reg and like they were so smart at it. And I will say this. I love the way that CT did this. He played this whole game of like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just a big, lovable B Bostonian. The whole time, I he knew, he knew exactly what was going on. And he was just playing this lovable character and everyone just ate it up. And then he ended up being able to get the traders out, get out one of the other girls, and then be able to spit the money with Trishel. Um, Anyways, very fun show. Loved it very much. Uh, you got some uh, musics or what? Let's see. I mean, you just went to a music awards show. You, you think... don't like country. I, I, I like country. What are you talking about? You don't like new country. I mean, who does really? But uh... <laughs> see, I knew you'd give me shit. No, but like you just like you being like I don't. Let's see. But you just heard a bunch of stuff. I'm sure. Yeah, but like. Nothing you're going to want to play on the pod. It's what you want to play. Oh, interesting. Have we played any of the Costellos? Like Elvis Costello? No. The Costellos. I don't think so. Uh, it's this little girl group. And they were at the award show. And they're so freaking cute. Are they like, like they're all blonde? Yes. I know exactly. They, they're very pretty. I know exactly. They're very pretty and yeah. they're so cute. Um, and I've been seeing them on TikTok and stuff for a while. I have too. Yeah. Um, and they're, yeah, starting to pick up a little heat. You know, people are starting to get on board. They're so cute. I love Cowboy Kind of Love, but they've got some other newer tracks. I'll let you pick. I don't think they're going to have a hard time finding a Cowboy Kind of Love when they look like this. Definitely not. You know? They're very cute. I mean, just blonde. I know. Just adorable. Yeah. But good for them. I mean, I want to make fun of it, but <sighs> I just want to make fun of it because of that, like sometimes it's annoying that like just pretty people like also so you're pretty and you get to be fucking good at singing, you yeah. know? Ew. <laughs> Ew. You're insane. <laughs> 
Um, I like this one. This is a Frazy Ford September Fields. She's got good bravado and then good horn section with her. Anything else? No. Uh, let's go out how we came in, baby. Uh, Bitchin'? Yeah. <laughs> no, I was playing uh, Total Look Up to the Heart. Oh. Because we were in totality. <laughs> you know? We got to mm-hmm. get totality. Gotta. If we don't have totality, what do we have? Um, you know? I don't know. Uh, what's going on in your world? Just here long enough to do a little laundry and repack my freaking suitcase. And just live on the road, man. <sighs> I'm tired. When do you um, stop? When do you have to stop doing this? I'm not sure. April and May look cray cray. Really? Um, yeah. June, it might slow down a little bit, but every time I say that, it, it just, stuff just comes up. Yeah. Um, coming out to LA on Thursday. Okay. I actually think I am DJing, doing a little pop-up set at Soho House WeHo, if you'd like to come by. What time? To, I don't know yet. It'll probably be like 7 or 8, maybe or 9. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, the Masters yes. is happening this week, so oh, your boy needs to watch some golf, you know? Okay. Well, you know, yeah. we were supposed to be recording, so. We are. We're recording on Saturday. No, I know, but Thursday we were going to, so instead of recording, you come to my set, but, you know, no pressure. Well, I mean, if I if I, I can see you, I gotta see you twice now. <laughs> um, and then I'm coming, and then I'm coming over. We're doing a little pod. Yep. And then on Sunday, I am DJing in Vegas at Encore Beach Club. Um, it's the first. They just opened the day club a couple weeks ago, so we're just kicking off pool season over here. So if you find yourself in Vegas, come hang. Uh, day club sets I think start at three p.m. So I'll be playing about three to five p.m. Hopefully out in the Vegas sun and not the Vegas wind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. Been a little cray cray out there. Yeah. What do you got? Masters. I'm going to watch the Masters. I'm going to watch the Masters. And then the week after that, I'm going to Dallas for the Invited Celebrity Classic, uh, the 19th to the 21st at Los Angeles Country Club. Um, buy tickets. Come hang out with us. Me and Ben will be there uh, hanging out. Ben and I actually got a uh, got ourselves a Airbnb. So we're going to be grilling out sticks together. Uh, I'm like very excited about it because I don't know if I love staying in hotels. <laughs> I hate it. You know? Yes, I know. I like um, I like getting my own place. So I'm excited mm-hmm. about that. And I uh, hope that uh, some YF tears come and hang with me on the golf course. And yeah, that's it. Cute. Yeah. What about for you? All right, YF tears. Um, we love you very much. Uh, send, us some, send us some more fuck you very much as if you could. Yeah. I do enjoy those a lot. And then also we need some more voicemails. Um, so you guys call us up. Leave us some voicemails. 858-630-1856. And I'm sorry to all the boomers out there that I offended by telling them that they just need to go and die. I'm not. They yelled at me this weekend. Fair enough. Yeah. You know what? Fuck you guys. <laughs> Totality. (laughs) Goodbye. Bye bye. This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation.